Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to repair a broken trace on a printed circuit board. A little while ago, I did a video on repairing damaged or lifted pads on a printed circuit board, uh, and this was very well received, so I thought I would continue this and show how to repair damaged traces. Now, traces can get damaged in a number of ways. Um, they can just get uh, damaged by accident. You get a nick in the, in the trace. So I work primarily with vintage Macintosh computers, and most of the trace damage I see is from corrosion uh, caused by uh, leaky electrolytic capacitors or leaky batteries or from poor storage. Uh, you know, maybe moisture gets onto them and, uh, and they get corroded that way. So firstly, let's go over some of the things that you're going to need. Uh, you're obviously going to need a soldering iron. Um, you, it doesn't need to be the best soldering iron out there, but I would recommend a soldering station rather than just an all-in-one soldering iron. You're going to need a good quality, no clean gel flux. You're going to need a really good set of precision tweezers. Uh, you're gonna want a blade. Uh, I use a scalpel, but like an X-Acto knife, a really good sharp blade for scraping. Uh, we're going to need some uh, UV solder mask, and we're going to want some solder, of course. Uh, we're going to need wire for the actual trace repair. Uh, and then afterwards for cleaning, you're going to want some isopropyl alcohol and some uh, Q-tips or cotton buds, and you know, probably a toothbrush as well. Um, oh, and of course, it's good to have a multimeter to check your work to make sure that you've restored continuity to the damaged trace. A couple of other things you're going to need are very good eyes and a steady hand. Now I've got a steady hand, my eyes are terrible, so I'm actually going to use a microscope. Now the microscope does two things. First of all, it helps me see what I'm doing very well, but I've also I've got a camera connected up to it so I can demonstrate what I'm doing. Now uh, these aren't cheap, so you may not necessarily have one of these at your disposal, but if your eyes are fairly good, I mean you can easily use something like this, a little magnifier. Uh, illuminated magnifier that uh, allow you to get up close um, so you know that will suffice or uh, some you know maybe some magnifying glasses something like that but for the purpose of this demonstration I'll be doing it with the microscope now all of these things I'm going to go through in more detail as we go and there are links in the description for where you can buy pretty much all of these things with the exception of q-tips and toothbrushes because I imagine you probably know where to buy those from. Now the wire that I use is uh, enameled wire. Uh, it's the same sort of wire that you would use on a transformer or an electromagnet. Um, it has this enameled coating on it, which means that it is insulated. However, that enamel coating comes off very easy with the heat of a soldering iron. So what that means is that you, uh, if you're needing to run a trace over the board where it might actually come in contact with some, you know, sort of other metal, that insulation is going to stop it from creating a short by accident. Um, but it is really easy to get that insulation off when you need to. So these are three different thicknesses of wire that I use. I've got the thick one up the top, the medium sized one in the middle, and the really thin one down the bottom. So if I'm repairing a thin trace, I would use a thin wire. If I'm repairing a thick trace, I would use a thick wire. Now keep in mind that it trace is a thin film of copper whereas these wires are actually uh, round which means that there's quite a lot more conductivity in the uh, in the wire than there is in a trace uh, if you're basing it on the actual di diameter um, so you don't have to go out and find wire that's the same thickness as the trace as I say I just generally work with these size wires and the thinner wire for the thinner traces thicker wire for the thicker traces doesn't have to be exact another thing you may need is solder wick and that's this braided copper wire uh, that's actually got flux in it and it draws solder into it. So you can actually use this to try and draw solder out. Um, and so we may end up using this later on in the video as well. Now, if you have a look here, you can see these are nice, clean and tidy traces. They're a light green color. You can see that these ones are all uh, still clean and tidy and there's no real issue with those. This particular board has suffered from some pretty bad battery corrosion. Uh, now, this is not actually going to be repaired. I'm using this as a demonstration. Uh, this board is pretty much beyond help. Um, so if when you're watching this video, you think, hey, you've missed a repair there. Um, I'm not actually aiming to repair this. I'm just using it as a demonstration. 
So here's what you don't want to see when you're looking at a trace. Uh, as you can see, that the corrosion has actually taken the film off the top of this and exposed the copper. And in some instances here, if I zoom right in, you can see that the copper is completely gone and just left an empty channel here uh, with no copper in it at all. And that's obviously a trace that has to be repaired. We've got to bridge that gap there. Um, so I'm going to actually use this one here as a demonstration. So the first thing we need to do is scrape away any of the old corrosion and any of the old uh, coating on top of the trace so that we expose nice, clean, shiny copper. Now I'm using here uh, these Swan Morton surgical steel blades. And the main reason I use them is because they have a curved blade and I find them really good for scraping. Um, but as I say, I mean, it's not an essential thing, uh, but it's just, that's what I like to use. So let's start off now make sure we're in focus might just zoom out a smidge okay so I'm just going to get my blade here and I'm just going to scrape away and as you can see that as I scrape that gets brighter and that's as I take that corroded layer off the top and I'm revealing nice fresh copper underneath uh, it's not oxidized so it's nice and clean and what we want to do is we want to expose enough of this copper so that we can get a decent amount of solder because the largest surface area that we have um, the more secure this repair will be. If we just expose a tiny little bit of copper and just put a little teeny weeny wire across there, it's only going to be held on by a tiny bit here. But if we expose this whole area, it means that that wire's got a lot more to, uh, to stick to. Okay, so that's, that's basically prepared reasonably well. The next thing we want to do is use our flux. Now, as I say, this is a uh, no clean flux gel. I use an Amtec one. Once again, link, links down in the description, but you don't necessarily have to go with the Amtec one. But as I say, what you're looking for is a no clean gel flux. There are plenty out there. This is the sort of thing you're looking for. And we basically just want to get that fairly liberally on top of that copper. Now we get our soldering iron and we get a little bit of solder. And what I'm looking to do is, I'm looking to just tin that copper. So what I'm wanting to do is just coat the copper with solder. So let's get this on here now. Let's do that. So now we've got plenty of solder on that copper, not too much, um, but we've got enough to work with there. So the next thing we need to do is grab our wire. Now for this one, I am going to use my mid-size wire. I would be fine with the small stuff, but the mid-size wire is a little bit stronger, so I'm going to use that one. I'm just going to cut myself a length. I've grabbed just a length of, I don't know, two or three inches, something like that. Place it here, hold it in place with the tweezers. I'm going to put it right there. And then I'm going to get some... I might put some more flux on this. It never hurts to have a little bit more there. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of solder on the tip of my soldering iron, just like this. There we go. And then I'm going to hold this in place with my tweezers and melt that on there. Now, that's fairly lumpy there, but it has held quite well. That is definitely on there no problem there. So now we just need to solder the other side. So once again, grab a little bit of solder onto the tip of my soldering iron and there we go. And that's soldered on there as well. Now it's a little bit lumpy. If I wanted to clean that up, I could just get a little bit more flux onto it here. I know I'm going heavy on the flux, but flux is a very important part of getting nice smooth uh, solder joins so you can see that with that flux there applying a little bit of heat all of a sudden that's now looking super smooth so let's just get a little bit more focus on that so that's the wire there I'm just going to nudge that with my uh, my tweezers actually I'm just going to cut the end off it now yep. like that and there is our trace repair. Uh, I want to check and make sure that it's all nice and secure. 
So I'm going to zoom into it a little bit here. Try and get it in focus. There we go. And then I will just give this a nudge with tweezers. And that's not moving. Okay, so now we'll just clean it up. Get my little Q-tip with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it. I'm just going to wipe some of this goop off. If we really want to go to town, we can always just get a toothbrush with a bit of isopropyl on it. Give it a scrub. And there, if you have a look, is a nice, clean tracer pair. That end is stuck on well, that end is stuck on well, and we've restored continuity. So that is it. Let's just do another one. We've got one directly above it, as you can see right there. Great big channel missing out there. So once again, we do our scraping. I might just flip this around. Okay, so let's scrape here. Expose that clean copper. Nice. Scrape here. Get any of that mask off. And, and any corrosion. So we've got nice bright copper there. Once again, we get our flux on there. Whoops. And then we get solder first. It's very important to get the solder on this first before you start putting the wire down. It just makes the process a lot easier. If you've already got solder in one location, it's a lot easier than trying to get solder on both at the same time. So, there we go. Nice coating of solder on that copper. Once again, we get our wire and put that in place. Okay, then get a little bit of solder on the tip of my soldering iron. Grab my tweezers. Hold the wire in place. Oops. All we have to do is get one side done first. There we go. Melt the solder onto it. That's nice and secure. Now we can focus on the other side. Get a little bit more solder on the soldering iron. Yep. Hold that in place. There we go. Okay. Then again, just trim off the excess. Like that. And if I want to uh, get that really neat, I mean, look, to be honest, that one is fine as far as I'm concerned, but I can always just put a little bit extra flux on there and just give it a quick brush. I've created a bridge there. Don't want to do that. There we go. And once again, we have nice secure wire held on there and we've repaired that trace i'll grab my little toothbrush here and i'll give it a bit of a clean get all that flux off it and there you have it another tidy trace repair now sometimes when you have a broken trace right near a via such as we do here, the via is that little hole there, you may want to actually run the wire right through that hole to give it a little bit of extra strength. So that's what I'm going to do in this instance. I'm going to scrape this off. And yes, I am well aware, aware, aware of the fact that there are broken traces just absolutely everywhere here, but I am only demonstrating this one here. So let's actually run it from this via through to the other via. So we're actually going to be essentially recreating this whole wire with a new wire. Let's uh, do the, the process the same as before. We do our scraping to start off with and then I get a bit of flux on here. I get my solder and get that melted onto the copper like that. Okay, now I need this hole open. 
So I'm going to grab some solder wick, which I referred to at the beginning. And this is going to just take away any of that excess solder from that hole. So leave it exposed. So there we go. There's our, there's our trace all ready for repair. Sorry about the focus, folks. And then I'm going to grab my wire. I'm going to poke one end through this hole. I want to try and get enough of it poking through. There we go. That's through on that side. And I'm just going to bend that down like that. And let's solder that in. So get our solder here. There we go. Just grab my tweezers so I can hold this wire in position. There we go, that's in pretty good. Now we don't really need to run um, the, uh, we don't really need to actually attach it to any of the copper along here because we're essentially completely replacing it. Um, I'm just going to cut off some of the excess of this wire so I can feed the other side through the hole. There we go. Let's poke that through. It'll probably be easier for me to pull this from the other side, so I'm going to whip them around. There we go, so let's pull that through. And there's our other one. Let's flip him back over to the other side. Here we can see that's our wire. I'm just going to bend that to kind of match the contour of the original trace. I do that purely for neatness, no other reason at all. And once again, we get some solder and we heat that up. There we go. All right. I might put a little bit more on this side as well. Okay, so now rather than actually uh, soldering it onto all of these little bits of copper in the middle, we're just doing it from end to end. And then I'm going to flip him over to the other side and I want to actually carry that on, carry that repair on to the copper underneath. So I'm going to scrape a little way here. Once again, get some solder onto that copper. Then grab my tweezers. This is a lot easier to manage now because it's secured well on the other side. Might grab two tweezers here so that I can once again bend this to the contour of the original trace just so it looks pretty. I could definitely be using a much thinner wire than this. Okay. Then. Hold him down. There we go. Let's cut off the excess. And that's one end all done. And where's the other end? The other end is over here. Once again, let's scrape that. Get some solder. Get some solder onto the copper. And bend the wire. Cut off our excess once again. And there we are. So let's zoom out a little bit here. Can we see both of them? We've got that's going along there, through the hole, along the trace on the other side, out here, and then attached to there. So I'll give that a quick little clean up. 
Is that a toothbrush? And let's have a look on the other side. I'm just gonna... I just want this to be a nice blob on this side. Even though I know it's soldered from the other side, I just prefer the look of it if it's got a nice blob on it, like that. There's a blob. And then we'll just clean that up as well, as best we can. There we go. One tidy little trace repair joining up between those two V's. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that those repairs are well protected. So uh, first of all, we need to get them nice and clean, make sure any flux is gone. Now, I would typically clean it in an ultrasonic cleaner. If you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can just do what we've been doing here with a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol and just try and get all of the flux and gunk off so that you've got a nice clean surface. And then we're going to paint on some UV solder mask to help protect the repair. Okay, so I've cleaned this as best as I can. Uh, obviously, it's still horrendously awful, but that's more to do with the fact that this board is an absolute train wreck. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my UV solder mask. It's like a sort of a plastic substance that hardens when exposed to UV light. Uh, it's, uh, it comes in a syringe like this as uh, a liquid, and you can just paint it on. I'm just using a little, little paintbrush here, very fine-tipped paintbrush. Uh, and so if we just grab some of this UV solder mask and we just paint it over the top of our trace repair like this this builds like a little buttress on either side of that repair to uh, help give it some strength. Just get that painted over there. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to expose this to UV light in order to get it to cure. Uh, now, I have a UV globe here, uh, but I'm in the middle of summer in Sydney, so I have got quite a big UV globe outside. So I'm gonna just take this board out into the sun and let it sit. It only takes a few minutes in the sun and that will be rock solid. Okay, so this UV solder mask has now had a chance to dry uh, and this is now quite, quite tough. It's quite a hardened sort of plastic. And that repair is not going to come apart at any time in the foreseeable future. I do hope this video has been of some help and thanks for watching.